Hi there, welcome to this build of a Clancy Aviation Speedy B. Now it's got a 40 inch wingspan and it's going to be powered by my lovely OSFS 26, so one of the really small four stroke engines. Now we're building this from a great set of plans that we downloaded off the Outer Zone website. And if you have a look in the description below this video, there'll be a link to those plans. And there's some other information that you can find on the Outer Zone website as well about this build. Well, the first thing we're going to be doing is doing two identical sides for the fuselage. And we're going to build those on the plan, or I've got a, uh, uh, an extra piece of plan here with the fuselage side on it. So we're going to build the first one, we're going to sand that smooth, we're going to put some plastic on and then we're going to build the second one. We'll have those back to back and sand them up. Once we've got those two fuselage sides, we're going to join them together with just some very simple, I think it's one eighth uh, cross formers. That's probably all we'll get done in this video, but it's a really good basic start to get this fuselage up and running and so we can then move on to how the wing and the nacelle fit onto the fuselage and also building the turtle deck on the back here. Now the turtle deck is interesting because it's actually split into two. The first half is attached to the trailing edge of the wing and then you have the second bit with the tail, uh, the, with the fin and the tail plane on the fuselage. So I've been really looking forward to getting this built. Now this is a very simple fuselage. It's essentially built out of 316 stick. So it's going to be sticked up and it's going to have a few solid pieces such as these fronts to the very, this is the very front of the fuselage, whoops, that way. And we've got a bit right down at the very tail and we've got a small infill section and there's a small triangular piece that holds the uh, the fin in place I believe. Now, oh and also kind of the turtle deck at the rear. Now to build these pieces or to make these pieces what I've actually done is I used to get the shape I used a piece of tracing paper and you can see the shape on there hopefully which I traced off the plans. Just place it on the wall, trace the plans I then put that on top of the balsa lining up the square edges and uh, is that the right way around that way lining up the square edges and then I just put a pin through to mark the curve and the spits for this cut out here and then once this was removed I could see those pin pricks I drew it lightly with a pencil and cut it out I've done that with all of these pieces I've then as with these I pinned them back to back and sanded them so they are perfectly identical so hopefully we'll get two identical sides and as I said the rest of the build is made up of this uh, of this stick uh, three, uh, again 316 stick so I'm going to get this set up now get my uh, plans down with a bit of plastic on to protect it from the glue and I will get these pinned into place and then we'll have a look at that and we can start sticking it up. Oh, and one of the other things that I've been doing, must remember, is I've been going through my scrap balsa box and finding all of the uh, 1 8 balsa I can find. Is it 1 8? I think it's 1 8. Uh, yeah, 1 8 balsa that I can find. Uh, so that's 3.2 mil. All the little scrap bits, it's a great use for all these little pieces that we end up when we're doing something bigger. So it's good to be able to use that up and see the scrap bin going down a little rather than just filling up. So anyway, I'll get this set up now and we'll come back and have a look. As you can see, I've got these three components pinned down. When I put in this uh, filler here, it's important to make sure that this piece of 316 fits in really snugly so that we can uh, we can glue that nice and square and tight so I put that piece in and pinned it down and similarly just making sure that this comes across here nice and straight onto this uh, oops, onto this rear piece now I'm going to be CAing this as I go and uh, it shouldn't take long to stick all this up
As you'll have seen with the high speed film, really quick process getting this sticked up. So we've got the one side done and you'll notice hopefully that I used a straight edge to make sure that the top of this fuselage was as flat as we could get it. I didn't want to follow the lines on the plan because I, you know, they bend, they, sometimes it, they're, they're not always straight. Much better to use a straight ruler, a uh, straight edge to make sure it, it is absolutely, uh, absolutely flat for the wings to sit on. So I'm going to take this off now and, um, and then I'm going to sand this and then set it up with the plastic on top and get the second side built. Right, well I've now got the second side uh, all glued up and I'm going to take it off the board and I'm going to give the sides a nice sand and get them flat, just get, get off any little bits of glue. So there we've got the second side and the first side, just get rid of the plastic and there we have the first side. So, and they are nice. Oh yeah, they're lovely. And uh, seem exactly the same size. But what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to sand the, uh, the edges of this and then I'm going to put them together. And what I will do is I will use a couple of clamps like these and I will just clamp them and then I'll go round and just make sure that there's, uh, there's no imperfections uh, with regards to each other. So I'll get on and I'll do that now. Well, I've got these clamped together now and I've got a little bit of balsa under the clamp so I don't mark them because these are the outside faces on the outside and I've given them a lovely sand and they're really nice and, uh, and the same now, so that's great. So we can get these apart and before these sides are finished we've got another doubler that we need to put on them. Let's see if I can just get this apart, there we go. And what we've got to do on this inside edge, which is this side, we need to put a piece of 316 balsa on top of the existing spar that we've got there. So we're just going to put that on top of that existing spar and run that right to the front and then sand that to the profile of that front. So I'm going to get on and do that and I'm going to be cutting up all of this scrap or well balsa I got out of my scrap box and um, I'm going to be cutting it to the right thickness which is it's about 15 mil uh, or the right depth, about 15 mil, and I'm going to start to make up these cross uh, formers, top and bottom. It's just basically a strip of balsa with a step out of it, so it just locks into the fuselage side. But I'll start to get those made up, and then we'll have a look at all that, and we'll start to pull this fuselage together. Right, well I've now cut all of my cross braces and I've got my fuselage sides and I'm ready to set it up now so I can glue the two sides together. But first, I need to put my hand up and, um, and confess to a mistake. I've put on this doubler, this 316 doubler, on the inside here. But I shouldn't have put that on until I've pulled the fuselage sides together. And the reason being is the fuselage the, the, the sides are nice and straight now and all that's done is stiffened it up and made it more difficult to pull those sides in. Now it hasn't stiffened it that much and it will it will bend enough to pull the sides in but if you're doing this it'd be far better to add them afterwards because one the sides will come in easier and then when you glue that on, it will hold those sides, because it's laminating it, it will hold those sides more rigid in that position. Like I say, I've, I've put these against the plan, and I've bent them, and I don't think it's going to be a problem. So, but yeah, I wish I'd done it differently now, but anyway. Now, these cross formers moving swiftly on, um, the one for the top, just slots in like that 
and the top of it is flush with the, uh, the top of the fuselage, which is fine. The one at the bottom though isn't. It still fits in the same way, but it leaves a little bit of a, a gap at the bottom, a little bit of a step at the bottom, and that's so that we can put in a 116 piece of balsa, or I guess it's going to be lots of different pieces going cross grains, but it's it, it basically the bottom of the fuselage doesn't sit on the bottom, it's recessed in, and, uh, and, and that's why that notch is a little bit less to allow us to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, set all this up and get it ready to glue in those uh, cross formers and we'll have a look at that just before I glue it. Right, well, I've got this set up very simply now. I, I should say that all these cross pieces, these cross braces, I took the measurements off the plans. I didn't use the uh, profiles on the profile sheet. And the two central sections, which is cross section B and C on the plans, they are the same length, so they hold the sides uh, parallel at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those glued first. I've got them just held in place with pins so I could set it up. But what I'll do is I will just check by hand they're in the right place and then CA them. Now I'm using the lines on my cutting mat and the fuselage sides are parallel with the lines on the cutting mat. And that's important because once I've checked that this is absolutely square using the uh, my um, uh, square and checking on these uh, on these cross braces, once I've got that absolutely square, I'm going to CA it, and then I'm going to work my way down and do the cross braces here, here, and then pull the tail together. And I know where the central line is using the lines on my cutting mat so I can make sure that I pull this in absolutely square like that right at the uh, right at the tail and uh, and then we can get these pulled in equally. I'm going to be doing the tail section first and keeping this all nice and square up here all the time checking that even though these have been glued it's not twisting as I pull it in because once these are glued and I start pulling this in there is a chance that this could kind of move um, in relation to each other and, and take it off the square. So that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue it like that. At the back here, the, on this area here, there isn't a cross brace so I've had to make the former which forms part of the turtle deck to, uh, to hold that together. There is a brace on the bottom. There are separate formers for the turtle deck uh, further up as well as the braces, which is useful as, as far as putting it together. So we'll sort those formers for the turtle deck at a later date. But, um, but I had to do that one. I did think about temporarily gluing it with a cross brace, but then I thought, no, I'll make that. Again, that's off the, the plans, the profiles, and I've measured it on the main plans of the fuselage. So I'm going to start CAing this now, and uh, wish me luck. It's quite, it's quite flimsy and moves around quite a lot. I've now got the, uh, the rear portion of the fuselage all glued up. I've got this former in ready for the turtle deck. And I was about to do the front end here, and it, it occurred to me that I need to make sure that the nacelle fits on top of this fuselage and the sides line up because if they don't, when this is fitted, we're going to have a step. So if it's, if it's too wide or too narrow, it will form a step. So we need to make sure that those sides are nice and smooth down. And the cross brace that I had didn't actually do that. It was uh, a little bit too small so the nacelle was just hanging over a little bit. 
doesn't matter back here because the wings are going to come out and we won't notice any disparity between the nacelle and, and the fuselage but certainly for this front piece here this short section so what I've done is I've made a new brace which if I put that in if I put that in that allows that to line up nicely on both sides so I'm going to get this glued now and uh, and then we'll have this done right I've now got the main skeleton of the fuselage completed and I'm really pleased with how it's looking it's looking lovely and symmetrical when you look down it and it actually feels quite sturdy which I'm, I'm quite pleased about I've got these custom braces in the front here so that the nacelle fits on and we've got those lovely meeting smooth sides of the nacelle and the front of the fuselage so we'll get a really nice look on that when the plane's finished I have put in a, a brace on the front here which isn't on the plans but I just wanted to hold this front end nice and secure so I know where it's going to go so when I do get round to sheeting some laminated sheeting to go on the front there and some sheeting on the inside when I get round to doing that I'm not worried about whether these are in the right place that's it now it's secure and uh, and in the right place and as I say this fits lovely so I'm I'm really pleased it's great at this stage to see how things really start to, to pull together but anyway I'm going to draw this video to a close now and in the next video I'm going to be looking at strengthening this fuselage getting the sheeting done underside, on the underside and this laminated sheeting on the front which will really give it some some strength and we've got to think about the axles at the, or the axle and there's an axle box that needs to be got, to put in between the, uh, the fuselage sides and we need to work out how we're going to do the suspension and we've also got to think about the locking mechanism for this nacelle on top of the fuselage so I hope you'll come back and uh, and see how we get on in the next video pulling all this together and um, and making this look even better so thanks very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed the video